that's right. Mm. You can use, yes, you can see me. Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about false flags. Hold on, I... I need to put this on the on the power before the camera shuts down. But just think about the word false flag. It's basically no, it's basically two words. False, which means something ain't true, and flag. Now, since the Roman Empire, countries have been identified by banners. And those banners we call flags. Alright? Every country and even every city and every province or just an area has a flag today. And most of the time they also have a coat of arms if they have their own army or they have a seal if they are part of a greater empire. Like every state of the United States has a great seal. They don't have their own coat of arms because they belong to the empire that we call the USA. Okay? Now a false flag. A false flag is basically when, when within a community members of the, of the same community commit a crime against the community yet blame someone outside the community for it. That's what a false flag is. And I'm going to, like, I'll try to bring the camera closer to this, so, hold on. Hmm, I'll put this somewhere else. Uh, yes, and um, I'm going to give an illustration here of how a false flag operates because all false flags basically work in the same way. So when you recognize this, then you understand you can easily detect false flags. You don't need conspiracy theorists to show you, you will be able to identify it yourself. Okay, so let's bring this a bit closer. Okay. Um, good. Now, I'm going to give an illustration. Let's say um, you have a community. I'm going to illustrate a fictive community now, just so to make my point. In this community, there is about 50,000 people, okay? That is about 350 families and from this community you have, you have the king with the royal house which from about 25 people and then you have the aristocrats which form about 350 people. Then you have the army, which consists maybe out of 11,000 men. Okay? That's, that's a small community. or And because they're united in a kingdom, they, they, you can say it's a kingdom. Okay? They have a common language, and they have common customs. Okay. Yes. So let's say that in this community there are, you know, separations. For example, you have three clans. This based upon their descendants, upon their ancestors. You have three clans. Um, and there's rivalry between those clans. Now this rivalry will end in will always end in violence and murder. So as I explained in a previous video of mine, when rivalry escalates, when you have a mimetic crisis, just like Rene Girard calls it. Then you will look for a scapegoat. Someone to blame for the whole 
for everything that goes wrong in the community so that people can vent their anger upon the scapegoat so that they will feel relieved from the emotional pain. And then things will become calm for a while. But, but as you understand, that's only a temporary solution and the a rivalry will continue and it will happen over and over again. So what is what is a better, I mean, say not a better way, what's another way that through ancient times people tries to unite communities without having to expose how, how bad the community is. Now, let's take this all away. Remember, we have a community of 50,000 people, all right? Okay. Let's say you have 50,000 people. Let's say you have husband and wife fighting each other. So you have a family here, husband, wife, grandparents on both sides. It's just a family. A little clan of, for example, 200 people. This one family here. Here you have another family of 300. So now in families you have strife. In the public sphere, people pretend to be at peace. But sooner or later, those rivalries between families are going to clash. And then what you then have is a downfall of society, as they call it. Well, I don't use the word society, I use the word community, because community is something real. Though that we met the crisis, every family and everyone clash against each other. So what do, did the kings and emperors of ancient times then do? They would gather a few people and they would commit a violent crime. Or let me say every form of violence is a crime, but, it, but you can what I mean, a violent crime. For example, uh, assault upon public property, for example. Like a bombing or a robbery or murder of a helpless child or teenager. Okay. So those those are the two categories that are often used. So when this happens, when the king and aristocrats of that community when they fabricate this false attack, they will really exercise an attack and they will really do assault one of their own buildings in the public sphere. And they will really do kill a helpless child or a helpless teenager. But they themselves will do it, they will hire others to do the dirty job. And of course the community, you know, they will witness the assault. You see, the, bird, the, the building is burnt down, or it is robbed, or the there are teenagers missing and later you find the teenagers back with body parts you know everywhere it's a horrible scene you know the government will make it appear very disturbing because that's the aim so they will commit a disturbing disturbing act of violence and this uh, act that will that will cause the whole community to feel threatened and though to the threat now the attention will be relieved from each other and attention will go to the danger that they perceive is coming upon the whole community. So now when this happens, the community will demand a, re a resolution. And what happens then when they demand that there will be that it should be resolved? People from the community from the families that were formerly both inwardly and outwardly fighting each other, they will now join together because they have a common enemy. They will become comrades. They will restore or build relationships. Both inward and outwardly. And now, so the false flag has been committed, 
that there are victims or some building is a is has been vandalized, but the community doesn't understand it. It's the government that's themselves that did it. So now, all those families that were inwardly dying because they were fighting each other and almost killing each other, and also families as a whole in the, in the community that were also fighting each other as families, all of that is gone. They're all focused upon the false flag and that someone needs to be punished. And now voluntarily, many people throughout the community will surrender themselves to the government to fight this danger. Because the community thinks as a collective a serious crime has been committed in our territory against us, so someone is behind it. We need to find it out too so that we can be safe. You see? As you understand, this is causing uh, social cohesion. Alright? But this social cohesion lasts as long as the common threat is around. Okay? So someone needs to be punished okay and because the community is convinced that the whole community is under threat they don't want to even consider the idea that it may be someone of their own community doing it because during the process of switching attention from each other and their rivalries between each other to this they develop a so-called social cohesion so-called bond with each other and now they feel temporarily safe within that bond and they don't want to think that someone from them, their own has done this. You see, so now they have to blame a foreigner for it. And this is the root of every war. And with war, I mean merely military conflict so what I explained here you know it basically a raw sketch of how war with what I mean with war is military conflict how old military conflict begins and why there are military conflicts you see all governments when there is war, they will always claim a righteous cause. They will always say something like, oh, that country over there, they are planning attacks upon us. Like George W. Bush said in 2002, I believe that there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and they are planning to use on US citizens, so we need to go to Iraq and fight a war to stop the danger. Or they will claim a holy cause, for example, and those are the countries we are killing each other and we are the noble ones, we should, we have a responsibility to educate those people, okay? Or they will come with other reasons, for example, there are, count there are small countries that are vulnerable and now, not, now uh, some, co some country wants to become the elder brother of those smaller countries, that's what China did in ancient, and that's what the Chinese Empire did during ancient times and also during the middle, medieval times with Korea and Japan. However, Japan never accepted it. Okay, Korea had let go of that broader relationship with China in the, at the end of the 19th century. Okay, so to, that being said, all the reasons and motives, all the reasons that governments give whether it's a king or a dictator or a prime minister or a minister in general, every reason governments give to fight war are invalid. Okay? Because it doesn't make sense. You see? You want to destroy violence by using violence. You want to, but the, the, the truth is, governments do lie about their motives for war. But why? It's simply sad and you will not find any conspiracy theorists telling you this because it's something they themselves don't want to admit. The truth being told, 
the population, so us, the human beings out there, we don't want to hear the truth. You see? And um, I'm going to buy this out now. Hold on. I'm just think about what I've said, okay? We do not want to hear the truth. Because I need to illustrate something one more time. In this lesson, in this uh, sermon, I mean. Hold on. Circles are families. Family, let's say this family Johnson, Smith, family Okano, Japanese, family Lee, Chinese, this is family Bath, family Lin. And let's say each family has an average of 200 people. Okay. Within those families, within each of those families, there is strife. And we are going to symbolize, I mean, reflect the strife with. So there is strife. families. All of those families together, they form a community. And sooner or later, you see because the whole community is connected with each other, those tensions that they want to keep, so the community wants to keep private will escalate. Your name is polarization in a, in a community. People become enemies of each other. And they will become ill willed towards each other. So, what's the cause of this? The first cause of this is because the community has rejected God. Because they've rejected God, now they are worshipping idols, mental, emotional images, or you can call it fantasies. And those fantasies, which aren't real, because people live by them and pursue them, you get conflict and it all escalates. So, to restore the community, to heal the community, the folks need to repent. Yet, the community, the unsaved one, they hear that. So, the only option left is to blame someone else that's outside the community. And now, think about this, guys. People don't want to hear the truth because they don't want to repent, so they want to hear a lie. Because if you do tell them the truth, they are turning against you. So the government will not tell people the truth because the government knows they don't want to hear this. You see? So, the, what, the only option a government has, basically, is to get along with the community and to 